Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak today. So, cancel culture is nothing new. People have always wanted to cancel others they disagree with, for it is easier than tackling the idea. Caesar, Gandhi, JFK were all cancelled. Joan of Arc was cancelled for becoming a symbol, and 17 year old Lady Jane Grey was cancelled for getting in the way, in the way of the throne of England, off with her head. Religions have cancelled people. Remember the Crusades? They speak for God. They are right because they have faith. But they're not always correct. Sometimes the ideas we do not like turn out to be correct. This is why we cancel people to cancel the idea. Throughout history, cancellation meant death. We burned witches. We threw Christians to lions. We transported millions to gas chambers. Neighbours hacked each other to death with machetes in Rwanda, and more recently, the cancellation of a French school teacher for trying to expand the minds of his students. Today, we use some of the same methods. Reputational damage, persona non grata, removal of livelihoods, association, threats of violence, calls to violence, and sometimes actual violence. We now have a new tool to use against those we disagree with, it's called social media. Like all tools, it can be used for good and for bad. The ability to communicate with the whole world in a second, to find like-minded individuals, to organize, to mobilize, but also to scream and shout without ever having to get up from your, set, from your sofa. To virtue signal that you're tolerant, kind and compassionate while placing your knee on the necks of others. I hear the excuse and self-denial every day. I hear the screams of, we're just stopping hate speech. That's a hate crime. You're a Nazi, transphobe, racist. They call people evil and Nazis. Why? So they do not have to be taken seriously, engaged with or listened to. But why? For it is easier than actually tackling different ideas head on. Ideas can spread if given oxygen. New ideas may expose weaknesses in the orthodoxy. It may eventually lead to shouts of, the king is in the all together, as people see through lies and falsehoods. Daylight is a great disinfectant of poor ideas. We need more ideas and we need more daylight. Joseph Stalin said, ideas are far more powerful than guns. We don't let our people have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? If you're not confident of your own argument or evidence, then why take the risk of being proven wrong? Best to close down all heresy and brand anyone who dares to disagree with you as a fascist. All you need is faith. Faith that you are right. Faith that you are just like Gandhi, Mandela or Dr King. It's pathetic and it's cowardice. I'm offended, I'm hurt. Your words pierce my heart like a knife. Words of violence, silence is violence. You're erasing my existence. These are the cries of people who never emotionally moved on from the nursery. Sticks and stones. We have nursery rhymes about it. They never wanted to be an adult, scared of their own personal responsibility. They have a lack of self-confidence, afraid of being captains of their own lines, lives, of their own destiny. I call them emotional haemophiliacs. They start to bleed at the first sense of distress. Now, I was cancelled in June 2020. I criticised Black Lives Matter. I went onto their website, read what they had to say and wrote an article about it. That was my crime. That was all the evidence needed to brand me as a racist and a Nazi. 450 people signed an online petition to have me sacked from the charity I founded. That was all it took. 450 signatures from a population of 7 billion. Did anyone call me a liar? No. Did anyone point out where I was wrong? No. The charge against me was simple, writing while white. Because today you are not permitted to comment on a topic that does not relate to you. Sacrilege. Writing while white is a new capital punishment offence. I needed to be destroyed. I was unfit to run a charity. I no longer 
entitled to have a view and opinion, for I obviously had the wrong ones. Therefore, I needed to be cancelled forever. The board of trustees at my charity panicked. Through a mixture of fear and cowardice, they sacked me over email. People from all over the world were outraged at the injustice. A sense of justice is a universal trait. We always cheer for the underdog. We all intrinsically know right from wrong. We get confused sometimes, but deep down inside, we know. You know, you've always known. Anyway, the board fell apart, they all resigned. This is what cancel culture does, mob rule. No willingness for discussion or debate or the ability to agree to disagree. Just a desire to have your point of view forced onto others. Do not resist or else, we have a word for this, totalitarianism. We saw how this played out last century. We need to avoid repeating this. I'm a nobody in the grand scheme of things. I'm not rich, I'm not famous. I'm not part of the elite. I'm just a kid off a council estate. I didn't go to university. I didn't have a father growing up. I grew up in poverty. My privilege was non-existent. It did not matter that I'd spent two decades working in the poorest communities, stopping kids getting involved in crime or being groomed into gangs. It did not matter that I used my own redundancy to set up a charity to help these kids. It did not matter that I had stopped the rape and abuse of dozens of children and had, and had offenders prosecuted. It did not matter that I had helped hundreds of homeless people off the streets and into accommodation and into employment. It did not matter that most of this work was in diverse neighborhoods. None of this mattered. In just the last couple of months, I've stopped the sexual abuse of a young girl and I've pulled a young man out of a criminal gang. This would not have happened if I'd remained cancelled. These are the real unintended consequences of believing cancel culture is virtuous and that you are the savior of society. A society you have no real understanding of. To end, if I'm perceived as the enemy and someone who should be cancelled for the greater good of society, then we are heading to a place where we all need to be afraid. You need to be afraid. For this place does not take prisoners. It is not interested in forgiveness and tolerance, but it does believe in punishment and it believes in retribution. For you will do as you're told. Eventually it will come for you. Who will speak out in your defence? I hope it's the people you defended when they needed you. That's why I would recommend we need to cancel, cancel culture. Thank you.